um hey all good morning good afternoon and good evening thank you so much for joining uh, hyderabad pad platform user group this is our august meeter and we are so happy to have you here with us today uh, as part of our today's uh, agenda we have two sessions one is presented by nijo joseph who is a microsoft mvp for business applications and the session he's going to talk about uh, is bring your canvas components to model riven apps our second session is by shrinath pega who is a microsoft mct and today he is going to talk about getting started with rpa so that's all uh, we wanted to cover today with that hey nijo welcome to hyderabad par platform user group hardika thank you <laughs> yeah thank you so much for coming here and sharing this interesting topic with our attendees because this is something which could be you know really powerful in the par platform world out there thank you so much for inviting me and uh, when i it's a long time i have pending action that i wanted to participate in your user group mm -hmm. so finally i got an opportunity thank you so much no problem <laughs> so shall we wait for some time or start a weekend start okay hi thank you all uh, well thank you all who has joined for the session so today's topic is bring your canvas components to model driven apps so before we start uh, i'm not going to very in depth session because canvas component has been there for around almost 2 years now it's in it's, uh, it was earlier in preview now it's uh, generally available canvas components and uh, component libraries are already now available but there is a one more option recently announced uh, you can bring these components to your model driven apps so we'll see how we can bring in so i'll touch up on what what are canvas components and uh, then what is component libraries and how we can bring those or reuse them in, in our model driven app application so before we start this is a very high level overview about myself i'm a microsoft mvp working as a technical architect and uh, you can reach out to me over the social media platform and i am mostly active in linkedin so feel free to ping me anytime in linkedin i'm kind of All, online almost all the time time so you can reach out to me over there so now to our presentation canvas components so i think most of you already know what are canvas components uh, so when you develop a canvas application you have a lot of options to create you know you have label buttons icons screens you name it you can call uh, you can use a lot, lot of components are available you can set up the properties you can add functions you can use power effects in the, in them even though there are certain situation these components are not enough you need to go with a custom or you need to customize them so there are two options to meet the additional requirement one is with additional custom code which uh, we simply call pcf controls a pro developer can you develop the code to build your own component in your as per your business requirement another option is a called canvas component so basically microsoft or everyone recommends first go with a low code approach let's say if we need to meet or if a business requirement is not sufficient with the uh, cannot be met with the local <coughs> standard components you can first try if if it is possible with the canvas component or if if it's not possible then you can go with the pcf control so now we are checking about canvas components so these are reusable custom components you can create in your application and uh, you can use this across different screens and uh, reuse them so we'll first flip and see how you can create a canvas component so let me flip to my browser so here we are at the studio so i have a solution here and i'm going to create a symbol canvas application so the demo the, this item common i'm going to show is exactly from the microsoft documentation excel i'll share the link excel so if you need any more details or if you need to repeat yourself or see the video again from the official site excel you can uh refer to the link i'll have another uh, a set of additional custom components as well i'll show them during the demo but uh, for for time being time with the interest of time as well i'll be taking a sim very simple component so let's create a new application I'm getting a new application, a Canvas application, tablet, demo app for create. So one of the common scenario we see 
this is not the ideal this is an use case but there are many advanced use cases but very simple use case i have a, co a component of custom uh, canvas app with multiple screens i'm adding one more this is screen one and adding one more screen screen two so we'll go with a header component so normally whenever we create an application we'll have a header so what we do is that we add a label we add the uh, details over here, the header text, the uh, label text, the field color, all the properties. And for the second screen, we can simply copy the component and paste to second screen. And if there are n number of screens, you can copy to the n number of screens. But that is an overhead. You, if you need to make some changes, some uh, element changes, you need to go again each screen by screen and modify it. That is a maintenance overhead. So here comes the very basic, very fundamental application of Canvas components or custom components. What you can do is that you can create a custom component and you can use it over and over in the screen, uh, in different screens and you can set up properties so that uh, like you use a standard control. So we come here, we'll create a new component from here. So I'm creating a new component over here. So to our new component, I will add a label now. Before that first step, I'll rename my component to header five. Renaming it to header five. And I have a label over here, same as we do standard headings. Just press it over here. So I have a label now. Now, so coming back to the component, so I don't need a full screen, so I'm just reducing the height to 80. This is, I'm setting the height of my, uh, com, uh, my custom component. Now, the next thing, we can have custom properties. If you look into any out of the box component, for example, take this label Excel, you have text, these all are the properties for the com uh, for the control you added same way you, you are creating custom control custom low code control we uh, the controls name is header five so this header can we can create custom properties so right now i'm adding a property first thing i need is the header text so that i can uh, like you set the test for a label you can set the test for the component i mean the header so i'm putting header text and there are two properties property type input or output input which means we are giving an input and output property we can treat this uh, use it use it as an output uh, in advanced cases this prop uh, the control can do certain calculations or operations or if they want to display out or pull up some data so you can use the output property right now we are giving the header text so i'm keeping as input and data type is text so i created one then for a control again I, I want to add another control for the fill color so i'm adding one more thing fill color and type you can see there are all the types out of the standard types are available i'm selecting a color picker over here and i'm creating it so now i have two custom properties let's arrange our label a bit more like all these properties you can give us custom properties but for the interest of time so i hope now you know how to go with or how to create a, add a custom property so right now i'm manually setting up all these properties 20 and i'm bringing it to center and i'm making it bold so now i have created a header component with some basic uh, with a label and text so coming to here again for this text what i can do is that for, for our header component we have created a property so what i can do is that header 5 dot header text you see the same approach we uh, same way we do out of the box controls the properties with the dot i can use now for this label again if i want a fill color i can take the fill So I'm setting the fill also. Cut five dot fill color. 
I'm using these two. Then for the text, we change the text color to white. This also we can set as a out uh, custom control property. So I'm making it okay. So now we have a simple custom control ready. So what all another thing what we can do is that we can set default values for the properties we created. One moment. So these are the two controls uh, properties I had de uh, defined and uh, let me here I need to save it first. Can text header text is available here. So I'm setting the property value from here. You can see it over here. So right, right now I'm changing directly. So same way you can drag this to any screens and directly set up the properties. We'll see that in a moment. So fill color also I'm giving another value. So I have a header now. I have, we have created a component now. Now flip back to our screens. Okay, this is our screen. So what I can do is that same way we insert standard components. Now I have a new option here, custom. So I can track in this custom property, our component we created over here. And uh, I can add just like we add a label, label or a text box, whatever it is, you can arrange the same way. So this is not, uh, the label is not arranging properly. I Even though I increase the width, I mean, uh, width of the header component, it is not being arranged properly. That will show in in our, our next demo, we can see. Okay, I had a couple of elements on this, deleting it. I... Okay, so you can see, even though I'm are adjusting it, it's not adjusting because we can set the width of the head uh, label uh, with the parent parent width, which I haven't given. That's the reason. But we'll see. There's a reason why I didn't. Uh, we'll uh, I'll show you that over the next uh, session. So now we have added. Coming to the second screen again. If I want to add some common on this screen, I can click on the button. Go here, custom. I can add a header over here. The same way we add standard text boxes, and I can change the properties directly from here uh, because I have added the common door. I can I these all are available fr from here as well. You see over here, or you can come here, and you can see the properties. We can change the fill color directly from here. Let's say for example red, and I can change uh, change the text as well. So it is immediately taking effect. And uh, you know the advantage is that, you know, mostly in most cases, uh, let's say it's a bigger enterprise application, enterprise, you'll have to a specific theme to be followed and the font size, everything needs to be followed. So you don't have to go to each screen and update it. You can have a custom control ready, custom our canvas component ready and reuse them across your screens. Now, another case. Now we created or modified in, or updated the component inside your Canvas application. What if you need to update this over multiple application? You are working for a bigger enterprise. They have five or six uh, applications to be developed. And all, since an enterprise, as I mentioned, they will have a standard uh, design or theming pattern, font sizes, font color, header colors, everything will be same. We will be following the same theme. So it's, it's not pra practical to go for each, create a custom component for each, or again, that's an additional overhead. So there comes the application or application of component libraries. So let's flip to a slide back. Component library will be a single source of truth for uh, your components. It is like a centralized managed repository. It will be easy for it will be easier for you to manage your custom components, and uh, you can publish. You can change the updates. So these up updates will be published to your application as well. We'll show. We'll see that in a moment. So basically. Common, uh, component library is like, okay, it is a solution uh, element, though you can again consider as a small, uh, a sub solution. Okay, it will, it's a library which will have all of your components, are you, or all of us, and you can add the uh, custom components required and you can edit outside of your, outside the scope of your application. Let's so flip back your screen so it will be more clear. 
So I have my demo up ready. I am saving it. So let it say it's taking some time. Oh, this time it's taking more time. Yeah. It's been saved and published. So we have our demo up for ready. We'll go back to the solution. So solution has a component called component libraries. You can create a new component library from here. More component libraries there. For now, I have an existing component library, which is called demo library. So this is a collection of the components I have. I can have multiple libraries. Let's say, for example, for each purpose or each theme, I can have different libraries or each business area I can have or based on the requirement. As for Microsoft recommendation, it is best to have maximum of 20 components per library. So uh, that's the ideal count they are giving. I mean, the ma maximum upper limit they are giving. You can have more, but in terms of solution, uh, ease of solution migration, I mean, the deployments and everything, keep it to minimum, like five to between five to 20, that's the ideal range. So these are the library. I have different components. I have multiple header components. I have a menu component. These are the different components available in my library. So if you want to create a new component like we saw just before from the application, you can click over here. You can directly create a new component from here, or you can import from the applications in your environment. For example, we just created a demo application. I can select it. I can import. So it has imported the header five over here. So now I can. Uh, this is how I maintain library. This is solution aware, so that it will uh, you can add your solution and take part in all your deployments in your LM lifecycle. So now how we use this in an application? Now we go back, or I'll duplicate the screen. So I come here. I'll create. We'll create another application. The solution. I'm going to create a new application. Canvas up. Demo up five. Let it create the application. So we we'll, we can directly instead of creating a new component directly for this application, what we can do is that we can reuse it from the library so how we bring the library in your application you have an option over here get more components click over here i have the demo library it will show all the components available in the library so it will take some time to uh, publish uh, my okay i haven't published my library after adding the components so what you need to do is that you need to save so each time you can add some version notes one i'm saving it so now same way you do for an application you need to publish this version and you can share with other makers in your environment so if you if multiple people are working in your environment you need to share with each person the same way we do for a canvas application this option is available so if the application is not shared they may not be able to edit your still uh, app users can use the i mean view the uh, component in their application however for a maker to make changes your application edit the application it needs to be shared so this is how you share the same way you share can uh, your canvas app so since uh, i'm the same person working on i'm not sharing so this is how we do it now we are over to our library and i'm refreshing see the header was not available before but header 5 is now available so i can add this header to my application so this is available and uh, live you can see in the previous case when i created a custom component the custom drop down was available but now since i added a library component i have the library components tab available so I'm adding that to the screen and I'm adjusting again, okay. but this is uh, the header, the label is not adjusting automatically. So what we'll do is that for now, I have saved my application demo up is saved.
and we'll publish. So this is taking some more time anyway. Okay, so this is the first time it is automatically published. So I have my app with a library component there. Now I'll go back. I'll come to my library. I open the header file and make some changes. It's already open. That's fine. So, as I mentioned, this library will be a single source of truth for the component. So, this is a place where I modify. I don't have to go to the application and, and edit the component. Though, if you attempt to edit over there, this is a, that is a significant difference which every time you, you need to understand. Right now, there is a dependency between your library and the com your Canvas application because that library your application is using a component from this library like we like we have a solution dependency exactly this will have a solution dependency if you try to deploy this application without including this library in the solution there will be a dependency error and solution deployment will fail or else if the library is already not there in your uh, target environment and you are de deploying without the component there will be a uh, dependency error thrown so there is a dependency. However, if you directly go, once you have added a library component to your application, directly editing, in, try to edit the application, the component inside the application, this dependency will be cut off. That will be a separate application. So that if you're any changes making in your library, that won't be reflected over your application. But in our case right now, we have added a library component and coming back, we are coming back to the library and editing it directly from here. So I have the label. So what I do for the label is that for the width of the label, instead of hard coded one, I'll do a parent dot width so that it will be adjusted with the width of the parent header component. So I have saved it. Now I'm publishing it. So we have published our library and I'm going back. So for the make is coming to the application, our first demo of five, I'm going to edit it. So I had added a component and I came back to the library. I modified the component which I added to my library. So now I, as a maker, I'm coming to or again trying to edit the application. So there are two options. See, since I made an update, it is showing a library update available. So sometimes, you know, it may this publish may take some time or back and it is taking time. It may not show here. What you can do is that you can come here and, uh, you know, for the components, you can uh, search for updates as well. So right now, what I'm doing over here is that, you know, I'm directly reviewing it. I can change. This demo library has been updated. I can update it. So in the back end, it is taking. So you see now the label automatically taking the width of the parent header component I added. You can see it over here. Or another option, as I mentioned, on the insert command, you take insert, click over here, check for update. Since we already had an update, it won't uh, show over here. There are no common libraries to be updated. So this is how you bring this, uh, you, you utilize your application, uh, your library components in your application. So now we have, we have seen two things about Canvas application. You can create a custom component and you can use a library to uh, as a source of single source of truth for your components. Now coming to our header main topic, how we will reuse them in your model your app. This uh, seems very nice. You can reuse many places. Let's say you're working on a bigger project. So you have created a component for your Canvas application, application and you are using it everywhere. But now you want to create a uh, you're thinking it is good if I can reuse this thing in my model driven apps application. This is a recent change. These the two topics which we uh, saw just before was already uh, around for almost uh, I think two years. But this this is a re recent update. How you can uh, use you bring this to your Canvas app is via custom pages. Custom pages is also there for around uh, one and I think it was released in 20. Uh, 21 uh, wave to update. So now it has already been there more than a year custom pages. It is generally available, but uh, it's still uh, experience updates are going on. So 
how we can utilize them just a brief about custom uh, pages it's a new page experience release uh, about around one year back and a synchronous page load that is one of the main advantage from my point of view you know if you go with it let's say you need some custom uh, cu custom page in your model driven application you go with the embedded canvas application there is a delay in the in case of you know page load you know the uh, frame uh, your model driven screen will load then there's a slight dependency or delay between your canvas and uh, embedded canvas app and your page or if you go with html web resource it's not synchronous your sti out of the box or your form will load then only your uh, html component will load but this is synchronous load and the document already is in par with the same header dom and this is recommended over html pages for embedded canvas application and this is also so solution aware this, this is the main advantage that microsoft always recommends if you need to have a custom screen your model model to an application go with a custom page first and if there are some limitations if you cannot go with that thing only then think about embedding a model uh, canvas application or with a uh, custom html page so now let's flip back to screen studio again We're going back so i'm just uh, touching all these points on a very high level because these elements are there been for around more than one year so canvas components libraries and custom pages so let's go to our model driven application i'm editing a model driven application let's say i want to add a new page this is my model driven application I'm adding a new page. I have an option called custom. You can, or you can go with the uh, application Excel. It will show what kind of application, whether it's a app or a custom page you need to create. So right now I'm adding directly from the app model to an app editor. So I have selected new and I'm giving new. Okay. It components. So I'm creating a new page. I'm not using utilizing an existing page. So I have added to over here. It will redirect me to the Canvas editor, Canvas Studio. So it is the same ordering experience as a Canvas screen. So let it load. the editing and everything is exactly similar to you use a canvas application or instead of a custom page you can simply call it as a canvas page itself because it's almost same so i have one screen over here you see it's almost same there is no difference but there are some limitations uh, in terms of the controls you can use you can navigate to the non-limitation page there are certain uh, non-limit already limitations are there but still uh, it serves the purpose for almost uh, all, all the standard scenarios so I have some, some settings, I'm just upcoming features. So I'm just enabling certain features. I want to add one more screen. There is uh, multiple screen options are there. So, okay. Classic controls, I have enabled them. Okay, so I enabled some of the features. So now let's say I have a screen now, now I need to design. So the same way you add it to the Canvas application. So uh, I will click on get more components so that I can get the library. I'm selecting the library over here. I'm selecting my header file, which I just created and I'm selecting one more component called menu component. So these are the two screens I created. So I have the library components available here. I'm adding a menu component. This is the same uh, kind of, you know, the canvas component which creates. I have a menu component over here now, and I'm adding my header also. Colors are not matching. I can give it a different color. Okay, so you can see, in the custom page, I have brought up my two components and maybe for this thing, I can have another button if I want. Okay. 
So I can uh, I have created a custom page with a button and I can set up. This is the same exactly. I'm go not going to very detail. It's exactly same as the way we create a uh, canvas screen. So I have created a screen. I have created a button. If I want, I can on select function. I can write and I have a menu over here. Now I have a header over here. These are the components I have created for my canvas application. So I can reuse them in my model to an application as well. So I have created it. I'm saving it. Yeah, I already have it. So okay, I'm probably I'm gonna publish it. So it is being published. Let it publish. X still publishing. So another thing you need to note is that whenever you modify your custom page, you create a custom page for your model, uh, your model and application, you need to publish uh, your model driven app again because this publish won't take uh, reflected in your model driven application directly because i have directly created a canvas uh, screen and i have uh, i have published it but the canvas uh, custom screen has been published custom page has been published however your application has not yet been published so you have to go to your model driven application so you can see the notification this is the first time this will be shown okay i'm saving and publishing it but for the second time, let's say you directly went to your, went your solution and you modified your custom page, but if the model driven application is not published, this change won't be reflected in your model driven application. It will be ta taking the latest or last published uh, state, uh, state when the uh, state of the can, uh, custom page when your model driven application was published. So I'm publishing this one. So this is my model driven app and uh, you can see this is over here. And uh, if you click here, you can arrange the navigation, you can move it up or down. It's the same model driven app editor. You can change the way where you want to present these custom pages can be called as a uh, model window, model dialog or a site navigation, or you can call it from many places and you can use power effects formulas like all, all the standard power FX formula. You can use navigate confirmation, all the uh, Power effects can be utilized, or in a model application, you can use the client API JavaScript to call or navigate your custom page with a parameter of your current screen, current record. All these can be possible. So, I'm not going to all the details, but these are the things possible. And this is how you bring your Canvas components to your model on application. Now, you can see I have a standard model on application, and just let's play it model on application with a custom page where you are utilizing, okay, ignore this alert uh, with your pages, which we created, you see over here. So now we are utilizing the same header you use for your used in a model and application. So let's say you're working on a bigger application, you need to uh, maintain all things in sync. Let's, let's say you create a custom button, a standard uh, button as a custom component with some addition features, or you create a slider, or you created a menu like this. So you want, you can you utilize the same in your model learn application. So this button does not, this menu doesn't have a functionality I have added, just the display purpose I have added. So you can see over here, I have created a menu. I'm utilizing them in model driven application as well as my Canvas application. I have created a custom header. I'm utilizing them in both my model driven as well as Canvas application. So that's all about my demo. Thank you. I hope this was uh, useful. I'm, uh, these components, as I mentioned, this was there around for some time, but uh, this option was recently enabled. So this is how you bring your Canvas custom components in your model and application. Thank you. Um, hey, thank you, Nijo. That was so cool. <laughs> um, I mean, I do have two questions for you on the chat here. So okay. shall I read it out to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so first one is if I reference a canvas component from component library and export my app to another environment where the component yeah. library does not exist, will my component work? Uh, so basically, as I mentioned, see if your solution contains that component library, it will work. Let's say if it is not there. I say it's like a solution dependency. You, if you're familiar with the model on application, you know, right? You are a component, but the dependent, let's say, look up uh, or a view. Dependent view is not in the solution. It will fail because of a dependency issue. It works the same way. Let's say in my model on application or a Canvas application, I add a library component. 
now there is a dependency if you go if you if you are if you have if you're familiar with the solution elements if you go to the solution dependency you can see there is a dependency so it needs to be there mm -hmm. i hope okay, i was I... able to answer yeah and the next question we have is how can we use any components in any of the project outside solution or different environments uh different environment i mean you know the same way you know you can export the solution and you can utilize in in there or there is uh, another way uh, i mean the that's a classical way a classic way that is not recommended now you know before the solution uh this library was as uh, allowed you know before uh, brought up the uh, previous option was you can export the same way you export your uh, you know canvas or barely you can as a file and you can import to the target environment but that is not recommended now the current approach is always you export let's say uh, it is in a different environment you can add your library to a solution as we can see over here now you know this is my solution you can you just need to take only this library you create a new solution only with this library add this library to your solution import your solution to the target environment and you can you, you, you utilize that components in the target environment um i hope that answers your question govinda if it doesn't please drop a message on the chat and uh, i can yeah. share it with nijo yeah, you can drop or you can, uh, feel free later also if you want any more details feel free to ping me in linkedin i'm happy to help <laughs> yeah I, I shared nijo's linkedin uh, url on the chat so anyone who has a question you can reach out to nijo directly on uh, linkedin i'll paste one more link this is the same header component where microsoft doc official documentation is there i'll pasting that in the chat as well let's say if you want to uh, refer more at see more details you can go to the same link uh, this is the reason i use the same component which is in the microsoft uh, documentation excel but the menu component is slightly different uh, still uh, there's a sample menu component also in the same page but that this, this is slightly different than the one i showed but you can uh, tweak it like the fun, uh, base is the same component in the microsoft document but i try to add some colors and uh, you know the different icons and different elements to that thing but uh, this, this, uh, in, in, in fundamentals, the principle is same. So you can refer to that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it looks like those were all the questions we had on the chat, Nijo. But thank you so much for joining us today and, you know, presenting this cool new feature with uh, the Hyderabad Power Platform user group. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, Radhika. Thank you, team, for inviting me. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so that was Nijo, guys. Now, next up, we have Srinath Pega, and he's going to talk about how you can get started with RPA. So, hey, Srinath, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. Can okay. you? Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah. Okay. So, if you want to go ahead and share your screen, we can get started. Are you able to see my screen? Um, yes, we can see yes. my screen. OK. So welcome, Srinath, to Hyderabad Power Platform user group. We are so happy to have you here. And if you want, you can start now. Yeah. Thank you, Ritka and uh, uh, Yash, uh, inviting me for the Hyderabad Power Platform user group uh, meetup. So uh, myself, uh, Srinath Pega, I'm a certified trainer uh, for uh, our platform and uh, Dynamic 365 uh, CRM. So I'm, I'm working as a senior consultant. Uh, these are my social links. Uh, even I have a YouTube channel where I post uh, a couple of uh, videos regarding the Dynamic 365 and, and Power Platform. And uh, this is my blog uh, where I post on blogs. Uh, um, right now I'm posting uh, one of the series uh, regarding uh, RPA. Uh, please uh, no, uh, go to that uh, website. Uh, every uh, Wednesday and Thursday, the blog will be posted. And moving on to uh, the session agenda. Uh, 
um, uh, this is uh, you know uh, session is for people who wanted to start with the RPA or uh, confusing with you know how to start where to start and what are the you know components just basic introduction to the RPA to get started um, that's that's we are going to uh, you know demonstrate here so this is uh, agenda uh, just overview of uh, RPA and uh, prerequisites uh, to start the you know, RPA uh, installation of uh, you know uh, power platform desktop uh, so that is uh, right now it's a free for windows 11 but uh, uh, any windows 10 or uh, prior version we, we have to install it in a uh, way and uh, we need to in, uh, register the system to the power platform for power, power automate for, for desktop so that is also uh, we're going to see it and also we need to add the extension to the browsers either edge or uh, uh, chrome so that's we are going to say it. So uh, prerequisites uh, which we uh, mentioned, um, uh, we should have uh, data was uh, environment which enable the data was uh, because it's part of the data was. And uh... um, Srinath, are you there? I think we lost your audio. Hey, Srinath, can you hear me? Um, okay, so guys, I'm trying to get in touch with Srinath. Give me a few minutes and then I'll update. Thank you. Um, hey, Srinath. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, I don't know. No problem. Yeah, I think something got disconnected, but you can resume. Is that screen visible? Yes, it is. One second. Mm -hmm. Is, is my screen up or still loading? Um, it's still loading, Sina. I see the black screen with a spinner. Um, do you want to maybe reshare your screen? Okay, it's visible now. Hello, Ritika. Um, yes, Srinath, I can see your screen now. I am seeing the PowerPoint presentation. Can you hear me? 
Hello. Hello, Srinath, can you hear me? Mm, okay. Um, hey, Srinath, can you hear me? Um, just checking in. Hey, Srinath, am I audible? Um, Srinath, if you're able to hear me, can you please try to rejoin the stream? Um, so I'm checking with Srina what's happening. Looks like there is some connectivity issue. I'll update back in a few minutes. Thank you. Um, hey, Srinath, can you hear me? Um, can you hear hey, me? Srinath. Yes, I can hear you. I can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and continue on your session? Hey, Srinath. Um, Srinath, if you can hear me, do you want to continue? Because I was able to hear you. Now you are muted.
Um, hey all, just a quick update. I just got a confirmation from Srina that he'll be joining shortly. So let's give him a few minutes. Um, hey, Srinath, can you hear me now? Um, Srinath, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay. Can I go ahead? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, so Power Automate uh, desktop uh, will have uh, two things, which is uh, the console and uh, flow designer. Uh, so what is console? Uh, the console where uh, we have, you know, uh, see the list of desktop flows in the both the Power Automate uh, for desktop as well as uh, make that power apps, uh, power, uh, power automate.com. There uh, we can see the list of uh, desktop flows. Those will be uh, visible. Uh, those called um, console. So uh, that's where we can edit, uh, run, uh, you know, delete desktop flows. We can perform those actions. That's called a console. And the flow designer. Uh, flow designer is basically where we, you know, develop the uh, power automate. Uh, you uh, know desktop flows so that's the designer basically you know power automate uh, for a desktop application 
where we develop those uh, uh, flows. So uh, we have uh, seven types of uh, uh, know, actions, plan, uh, panes there in the app. Uh, let's say workspace that's a designer where we you know add the our uh, steps over there and uh, this will uh, I'll, I'll show you in the you know, uh, demo uh, where we uh, you know find these and how we can use use in you know, a uh, flow uh, design and development uh, as i mentioned you know these are the features of uh, power automate for desktop uh, those uh, and uh, and descriptions for those uh, will uh, jump into the gem, uh, demo uh, where I uh, show you the all the things. So I'm I'm on uh, Power Automate uh, environment. So this is my environment which I'm going to you know have my RPA flows. Click on my flows there we can you know see our uh, desktop flows uh, in the desktop flow tabs right now i have a couple of yeah uh, these are the flows which i have already created in my system uh, so to get started create uh, to create the flows uh, we should be install power automate for desktop app for that uh, there is an uh, option to you know uh, download the exe file setup file uh, to uh, install into the system to download that uh, just by clicking here uh, it will uh, download um, uh, to the system yeah it's it's already start uh, downloading so once it's uh, download uh, we can you know uh, install into our system but uh, there is a uh, process to how to install this uh, application uh, since uh, this application already installed into my system uh, some of the steps I'll, I'll show you uh, but um, yeah let it download yeah it's uh, downloaded let me open that uh, setup file yeah it's uh, i just uh, yeah it's One second, yeah. I, I'm I'm just running the uh, exe one more time, uh, but it's uh, all throwing an error like uh, uh, already installed in progress. Let me, yeah. So installation already, uh, you know, uh, it's done. So uh, it's right away went to the uh, last step. But in in the installation process, uh, there is a last step. Uh, we'll get this so by, by we, we need to enable this uh, extension uh, to the browsers uh, both the uh, edge and uh, chrome uh, in the installation process this is the last step uh, by clicking this uh, google chrome uh, it will uh, give the browser extension we need to enable the power automate uh, extension to the browser so this is the extension manage extensions so uh, this is the extension we are going to get into the, our browser uh, right now it's on if i click off it will be disabled uh, to my browser but let it be on and uh, both the uh, uh, edge and uh, chrome uh, both will be enabled uh, when we click on uh, both uh, each and uh, uh, browser after that uh, just launch the app so it will open the uh, power automate uh, for desktop app will be launched in the system as a uh, just just um, uh, application in the Windows system. So this is how it looks like uh, in the um, uh, system. 
uh, there is no apps uh, flows will be nothing uh, it's going to be there just it, it the ui will be like this and you can change the environments uh, here uh, after signing into the app so it will uh, gives to all the environments uh, uh, whatever the you know id which you use um, uh, belonging to that tenant or uh, whatever the environments is there the list will come here and uh, uh, get premium because it's not licensed so so it's it's premium uh, showing that after that uh, we should uh, register uh, this uh, power automate for desktop to our uh, uh, system uh, for that uh, just click on uh, settings it will give you the settings window. Um, these are the just normal setting, uh, just be uh, auto uh, settings, just be uh, like that. And this more uh, general settings, it will be go to the documentation and open uh, mission settings. This is the settings we are going to register our mission with the power uh, automate for desktop. Just I clicked on that uh, open mission settings. Uh, yeah, it, it takes a bit of um, time uh, to open up. So already I uh, registered uh, my mission with this particular environment. So it's showing as I connected to this environment because uh, the environment which we are going to work on. Uh, uh, otherwise, if we want to connect to other environment, just change the environment, whatever the, you know, wanted to connect. Uh, if I select this, So it, it takes time uh, to you know um, uh, register the mission uh, to this particular data was environment um, so that you know uh, these uh, yeah click on change it will uh, change the registrations to the mission to uh, data was environment so uh, by changing this so now sales tr uh, trial environment is going to be registered with this mission and data was uh, environment uh, with this app so that we can create our uh, data uh, you know uh, desktop flows so with that uh, environment so uh, with this uh, power automate of our desktop will be connected through the uh, data was so that's 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 why we need to register the mission yeah now it's uh, registered uh, this mission to this environment so that uh, it will be connected and uh, if any mission groups so that uh, we can add the mission groups uh, something kind of uh, vms and troubleshoot if you have, if you have any uh, issues with the uh, system so we can uh, get the machine logs and uh, change the you know like uh, any connectivity problems uh, so that we can get the uh, issues uh, here so let me close this since uh, uh, environment let me go back to the our environment now for so where where we need to create our uh, desktop flows so um, we can create right away from here uh, it will create a uh, desktop flow here or else so since we have uh, power mid portal um, on the browser so, uh, we also have uh, this option to create a desktop flows from the uh, maker portal
So. So let it reload. If I click here to new uh, flow, it, it will ask you the name. The moment I will uh, give in a name and click on create, it will create a flow and open the designer of uh, Power Automate for desktop. But in, in case of uh, make a portal, it will launch the same window after uh, let me create this uh, So it will open the you know now this is a console now after uh, click on create it will open up the uh, designer uh, for power automate uh, desktop So this is uh, uh, Power Automate uh, uh, Designer, uh, where we can have you know uh, add our uh, steps and run and save the you know uh, flow from here. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, the seven uh, pa panes are in the you know designer. So this is an action pane. So all the actions to be added to the flow uh, as a steps. These are the categorizations under that we have uh, different kind of uh, uh, actions so uh, based on the requirement based on the, the the type of flow we are going to use it so we're going to add the respective actions to it and another one is uh, subflow and main flow so uh, in, in, in any case uh, we are calling subflow in the main flow together uh, performing you know, one particular uh, certain actions. So we create an another flow, make, you know, you consuming the main flow. So that's that's called uh, subflows. And uh, uh, this this one option is uh, record. Uh, this is going to be re uh, uh, record our uh, screen steps, uh, which is uh, UI flows. And uh, this is a uh, variables. Uh, variable uh, flow variables uh, which we are going to use in any flow uh, all the flows will be uh, come here and uh, input variable and output variables if we uh, create any such variables to be used so those comes here and as i mentioned uh, these are the ui elements when we record in a screen uh, it will create in a uh, elements uh, which is ui elements so those will be added here to be con uh, used in a uh, desktop flows uh, this one uh, images uh, as uh, same um, as uh, ui flows any images so though from that images will going to create in a uh, ui element to be used in a flow so this is the uh, you know uh, way we created a, a RPA from the uh, Power Automate uh, for desktop. So let me close this. I'm going to the make dot uh, Power Automate portal. So if we create a flow from here, what happens? So let's just. Yeah, it, it got stuck. Okay. 
so uh, the moment uh, when we uh, create a flow from there so it will ask you the name but it, it launched from uh, the screen this uh, screen itself Yeah, it will open the designer um, in a bit a moment uh, because it has to be um, do the you know uh, process in the background yeah it's it's still uh, coming up Yeah, it's it's um, um, opening, uh, no, whatever the flow we created, uh, opening the flow into uh, designer mode. So uh, the moment um, now um, we didn't save anything. Uh, just we given a name and uh, uh, click on create it. Uh, create uh, it open up. Uh, you know, create uh, designer more. So uh, the moment uh, we save this flow. It's it's saving now. So now this uh, flow got saved. Now uh, we can uh, we can see it uh, on the make that uh, here we can see the same flow here, uh, which we created, which is the name of uh, RBA. Yeah. Now we can see here. From here we can edit this flow. Uh, it will ask you to open the same uh, launch app. Uh, it will open uh, this only. Even uh, if we create it from here, it will ask you open from here itself. So uh, to create a now we uh, uh, created this uh, you know desktop flow. It's open up in a um, uh, designer. Uh, more in a power automate for desktop so to add the uh, steps and create a flow uh, we can add the steps to it uh, a very simple use case to you know uh, con uh, you know format the date format from um, you know um, uh, asian european format uh, date format to american uh, format for that uh, which is you know uh, asian uh, european format which is you know date month and year but us is uh, month and uh, date right so we'll 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 uh, uh, we'll change that uh, with the rpa for that uh, um, we, we we need to give an input for that so after that uh, that input needs to be you know uh, captured and formatted and again, it's uh, display back as as a formatted value. Uh, for that, uh, just search for uh, you know, display input dialog. Uh, by uh, double click, uh, clicking, it will be uh, added here. Or else, uh, we can drag and drop to the 
workspace it will be added as well as uh, uh, it will ask you the uh, you know whatever the values to be filled so it's asking the input dialog title which is basically the name please enter the date date which is uh, date mm and uh, year and default value not they we need we don't need any uh, uh, default value because just we are capturing a uh, date and um, you know formatting and uh, later uh, message to the again messaging into the end user as a formatted so let's see if this user input which uh, whatever the entering uh, this is a user input so now it's added as a, a variable user input whatever we enter uh, it will going to be uh, stored in the user input variable then it will be consumed in a later steps now uh, we enter the date it's going to be captured in here the date has to be uh, you know um, get the date and uh, format it so for, for that uh, there is an uh, um, action called convert date time to text date time uh, yeah here in a text uh, there is uh, called convert date time to text so let's double click it will going to add here and ask the uh, you know uh, input values so date time to convert which is uh, what is the input for this so as I mentioned, um, the, here we are going to have the date which we enter as a uh, Europe format or Asian. Just, yeah. So format to be used, uh, just custom. So whatever the format we want it to be uh, uh, half. month date yeah so this is the sample date um, looks like or else if i give double d on save so uh, now the formatted date is going to stored in this formatted date time uh, variable so now uh, we have to show the this message uh, in the message box so that uh, we we can have we have a display message so that uh, we display a formatted value as a message Display message. Just double click over here. So message box uh, title. Formatted date. So a formatted date um, has to be shown. So as I mentioned, so formatted date has in this variable. So to add that variable, just click on the select variable. It will give you the list of variable in this particular uh, flow. Uh, since we have this, uh, this is a variable we are going to store this formatted value. Just select and yeah, this this uh, all good. So if we uh, select this, it will be uh, come uh, in the front screen of uh, every uh, window. 
so since we have only one single message no need of uh, that so now uh, we added the steps uh, we are uh, getting the input value from you know date format just getting the date and formatting to the text uh, as a required format and we are displaying uh, with the display message uh, step so to run run this step uh, just click on run So this uh, this dialog input is asking. Um, let let me give a date. So now uh, it got uh, no formatted uh, um, as uh, month and date. So uh, even it it runs in a way if i give the month as uh, some sort of you know august name date is 20. even it's uh, you know uh, giving the uh, required format so uh, this is uh, how uh, you know uh, this is a very basic um, uh, desktop flow uh, you know uh, we can format these things we have bunch of uh, you know actions uh, to be performed uh, any 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 uh, um, you know um, advanced uh, this uh, desktop flow also will be you know uh, uh, create like this, uh, taking action from here and giving the required inputs and uh, form uh, variables. So it will be uh, executed in a, the way in which we develop. So um, I have uh, one flow got created. I'll, I'll show you what it does. So, so this particular folder, little launch in Power Automate Desktop. Yeah, it's opening. So this this particular uh, you know um, uh, desktop flow is. Um, let me open up this. This uh, action called uh, gets special folder. Uh, it's going to be targeted the uh, folder directory, uh, which is a desktop, entire desktop, all the um, desktop folders and everything. So this is a directory. Uh, we are uh, taking as a variable this and uh, same same action. Uh, one more time, uh, it's targeting the documents and special folder path documents. now get the files in the folders so this particular action is what what is doing uh, folders uh, which is uh, uh, path it's asking which which path we are going to get the files that so we have two variables this particular variable folder is targeting to the desktop and this particular uh, variable is uh, targeting the path documents in the uh, machine so it, this particular uh, get files in the folder action uh, is, is given as a desktop uh, uh, folder and file types uh, just uh, given a, P a pdf and a doc so uh, we can give any number of uh, there is nothing uh, uh, any uh, restriction so include any subfolders if you want to you know uh, capture uh, in between any subfolders to be uh, 
uh, you know capture this uh, file extensions so we can enable this if not not required so there is a uh, start by but those kind of filtering uh, is there so just cancel so uh, we got all the files uh, getting the files from this particular this particular folder matching the file extensions pdf and doc and store them into the files files live uh, uh, variable all the files in uh, of extensions of this will store in this file now uh, we got the files of uh, this extension to this uh, we, what we are doing just uh, getting enough you know, for each loop and checking the condition uh, as current items in a files if current item extension let me open this again so current uh, item extension so for each is storing as a, a current item from the files so that ex extension if contains pdf then so how we can give the extension there's a variable so files once again Yeah, yeah, this is the extension. If we uh, select this extension, it will comes like this. So uh, current item dot extension. Case sensitive, then uh, move the files to, uh, let me open back this. So file moves to current item. Uh, destination is uh, this uh, second uh, uh, path. So this is the uh, second uh, uh, special folder document store in a special uh, variable documents move it to this particular uh, location uh, if the file exists uh, do nothing or uh, override whatever we can do uh, we can do it let's save it so uh, this this uh, uh, desktop loop uh, does just grab the, all the uh, files from this desktop which extensions of uh, pdf and doc will move it to this particular uh, documents folder uh, it's it's already you know run the uh, this uh, flow and uh, all the files got uh, transferred to uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, path so what will i do just just uh, change this uh, i'll show you the path and i'll rerun this uh, flow back So now all the uh, these uh, documents and these are the files. So the PDF files. So just uh, change this uh, path names. So let's uh, back to uh, desktop. now current files pdfs then special talk into just i'm uh, pulling into uh, you know uh, document folders into this tab again let's click on save to run this click on run yeah it's it's uh, um, running and how many fly files of pdf it will be going to be run yeah it's done yeah there is no pdf files in the doc uh, docs 
your desktop all the pdfs uh, came into the desktop back again so this this is how you know this is one of you know um, uh, classic example you know uh, moving you know this kind of uh, repetitive works or any uh, kind of automation works so uh, we can use this uh, rpa yeah uh, that's all uh, from my end uh, ritika um okay thank you srinath for uh, you know sharing all this information i i'm sure that this is helpful for anyone who is starting their journey with uh, you know rpa using our platform so thank you so much for that and i do have one question on the chat which is can i run various runs parallelly using desktop flows yeah it, it yeah it it can be done okay so at this point i don't see any other okay no problem this guide i think you were saying something yeah we we can run but you know um, it uh, as i mentioned license should be required and uh, uh, there is uh, in bond out bond uh, you know features will be there uh, yeah you know it's a uh, matter of you know execution time if it is a smaller execution we can run it uh, with larger uh, uh, flows we can uh, run in a you know uh, from the vm machine so so that we can run within mm -hmm. uh, physical system uh, may get an issues sometimes mm -hmm. okay i hope that answers your question richard so with that shrinath i don't see any other questions on the chat but i have shared your uh, social media credentials so that if there are any questions related to rpa the attendees they can reach out to you directly yeah thank thanks uh, uh, ritik and yash and for having me on the session yeah mm -hmm. thanks thank you shrinath so yeah. with that that's all for today we'll meet next month with another set of sessions if you think you have something that you want to share with the community please reach out to either me or yash and we can help you find a slot in one of our coming meetups but with that uh, we are done with the two sessions we were we wanted to present today and we'll meet you next month thank you so much for joining everybody take some rest and thank you bye bye